Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It Dawn. Let's leave Nekataka, hunt down Quaro, and return to Dunnage, return in all these bounties. But first, let's make sure all of our companions are equipped. I think Stride will be useful on him. In fact, we'll keep stacking it. I got her that shield. I'll give her a leap instead. She gets intellect anyway. Not that I think she needs it. I think the light armor is better on her, and it looks better, so we'll stick with that for now. Alright, and our prey has revealed himself. Let's check these companions real quick. Yeah, they're all pretty well equipped. So after we turn in all these bounties in Dunnage, we'll return to Matario Cozy and actually explore the island. Got a very large crew.
Let's pull Adair back and get this sailor off of our back line. And the wyverns can help. the chanter next Fire damage. That's not where I cast that spell at. I saw Maya get hit by a fireball because he ran into its path. Let's quarrel himself. Let's throw this out on him real quick. I bring your end. sure who cast that spell at the end there, but sure was annoying. Oh, it's not done yet. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I got an achievement. Old Salt. I assume that's for collecting triumphs. I guess none of them had equipment? Interesting. Now for the long journey back to Dunnage. I guess only halfway across the map. Also, let me check my other bounties real quick while we're out and about. Oh, I didn't turn this in. We'll stop by Nakataka and do that on the way back. I feel like we've seen Baina before. I could be mistaken. So there's Barunga. I mean, since we see them, let's get them. Not sure why we're stuttering. Because we're in pursuit. 
Yeah, it seems only because we're actually going after Barunga. I assume because our ship is constantly readjusting its course. I didn't look to see what level in class they were. Sorry, Edwin. Not a good place for you to be standing. Okay, Adair, take care of the chanter for me. Can't fit my way through all of these enemies. I don't want to hit Jody. Let's just go and pull her back. Then pop this. Fireballs away. That dog won't hunt. Oi! Watch it! Oh, you're fine. Yeah. Barely tickle you. Take him down. I no, I cannot do that. I didn't even see the captain. Yeah. Oh, there they are. Looks like a fighter. If I had to guess. No, maybe a druid. They're casting that uh, wind spell. And still no equipment. We're just getting food supplies. But while we're here, we'll take care of the slavers, and then we'll return to Nekataka, turn in the two bounties, and then sail back to Dunnage. We're getting a little off track. Which is really easy to do in these open world games. I'll just do one more thing. Just one more thing. So I should swap out my pet for Abraham. For the better armor recovery. Ah. 
Go. I thought we were friends. We take a pretty big hit there. went down. Speaking of, she can probably do better than a saber. Maybe not. We have too many swords. I do want to give Aloth a dagger instead of the rapier he currently has equipped. She has one, but she's better suited for it. Unless it's puke stabber. And Edwin has a stiletto. I want Aloth to have the dagger for the parrying blade. Gives him bonus deflection with the uh, dagger modal. If he finds himself in melee, I just want him to survive. I'd rather have the... Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd rather have the defensive bonus of the dagger than the offensive capabilities of the rapier. So now, one of the bounties is turning to the guy in the palace. Alright, and... Arunga is in the Brass Citadel. What? That was weird. A voice calls out to you from an alleyway. Alright, so we may not make it back to Dunnage this episode. Nekataka's poor districts host more dark than light. The streets and alleys the only housing many Hwana know. As you pass by one of these alleys, a voice calls out. You turn to see a hand fold out from the darkness. The pale palm balances a figurine, more silhouette than statue in the dim light. When you try to get a clearer look, the fingers fold back up. It's not creepy. Magic, the voice says. It summons beasts to harry your enemies. We'll save you in a pinch, in a city as dangerous as this. Try that your life's worth a few silver. Torchlight glints from the man's teeth. You want, you follow. The figure withdraws into the darkness. That's obviously a trap. Oh, okay. Might be worth it anyway. They only caught a glimpse of it. 
you know that the figurine is no mere trinket. There is untapped power within its form. Enter the tunnel. Within the alley, a torch ignites, revealing a tunnel entrance. You pass through the archway. On the other side, a group of Principi holds torches and blades. Bodies stuff the corners, eyes dry in the flickering flames, some with their hands bound, others face down in the grime. Strangely... Bachil? Bakil? Isn't it? The pirate draws his weapon, set out a little cheese, and these foreign rats come tick tick tick, chittering in. Look at this option. Cause this might hurt a reputation with the Principe. This won't. You must be new here, given that you don't seem to know who I am. Ned Pirate steps forward, bringing a light close to your face. The man pauses. Merla, Donald? Another pirate raises his weapon. Are we doing this or not? Put that away, fool. This is Donald. He has friends among the Principe. The pirate drops his sword in disappointment. Ah, well crap. Silence, fool. The leader snaps. He sniffs the air. Or are you a rat? Hmm? The pirate shakes his head and straightens up. No, sir. How much will it cost to take that off your hands? The pirate snorts. You still want it? His eyes flicker the length of your body. Let us say 2,000 pyre. I hardly know if it's worth that much copper. But we shouldn't let our friends hear that. He gestures toward the dead men in the corner. I'd certainly hate to hear I tied on a discount. Give 2,000 copper. Deal. The leader purses his lips and nods. Gilarde. He takes the pouch of coins, and another pirate gives you the figurine. Batter dog figurine. The small hound is whittled from cedar. The craftsmanship, while admirable, is hardly that of a professional artisan, and the figurine is in rough repair. It has the smell of a graveyard about it. Perhaps it was buried at some point. I'm on a grave hound. I don't think I've ever seen a grave hound. The leader sighs. I suppose we made full use of this place. Drinks anyone? He looks at one of the dead bodies as a squeaky rat clambers up its trousers. The pirate leans back. Ah. A bit busy, I see. I'll leave you lovebirds to it, then. He bows to you. Until we meet again... Excuse me. Until we meet again. Bonamiko. Imiko? Imiko. Wish I didn't make you restart your journey. I think the only time it doesn't make you restart the journey from where you set out from is if there's an actual map encounter. I'm gonna get up for this up now. Indeed. Uh, they might attack us if we do. Let's quick save. <laughs> the All right, so opening that will most probably cause yeah. hostilities. My favorite privateer. Clear skies. Okoyo crosses his arms over his chest. Barunga's ship went down with all hands. It is satisfying to see one of our island cousins humbled for a change. May the others take this as an example. Okoyo winces as he hefts a bag of coins and passes it to you. Ooh, 4,000 copper for that. Privateer, you served Rawatai with distinction. No more could possibly be asked of you. Okoyo snaps his arms over his chest, his lip quivering with pride. <laughs> Salute. It's been a pleasure, Okoyo. Awesome, and she finally leveled up. Athletics and Intimidate. We have a lot of choices for her. I think we get a point in both classes. I think all these are new. So tough isn't new, get more health. 
Uncanny luck. Our courage thick as steel. Grants allies a protective barrier that absorbs damage. 10 point all damage shield for 10 seconds. The dragon thrashed, the dragon wailed. Calls forth fiery talons causing burn or slash damage to enemies in the air of effect. Seven men, onto the deck they went. Allies in the air of effect gain resistance against dexterity afflictions and might afflictions. And rapid casting. An evil turned away from the sun. Burns enemies and deals greater damage to spirits and vessels. The lights dance across the moor. Wists are more powerful than usual and possess a distracting attack. Benfidel's neck was exposed. Also applies a penalty to all defenses. Seven nights she waited while the white winds wept. Attacks enemies in seven directions around the chanter with bolts of freezing ice. The bride caught their ruse and said to make them pay. Empowers allies in the air of effect with the quick and insightful inspirations. Grenisk's beast lit the night with his breath. Calls down a drake from the skies to fight for the party. Together they slew forth a river of red. While charmed, enemies deal more damage. That's a pretty tough call. I think I want to make her chance, her passive chance, more effective. And give her a little bit more offensive power. Is this can proc while she's summoning the wyverns as well? I will get the Drake. And it's upgrade. I'm gonna grab this for now. And here we've seen all this. I already have a paladin. I might just go with Uncanny Luck. Maybe not. I do think I'll grab Uncanny Luck on everybody at some point. But I find it most valuable in my main character since it has a chance to outright avoid an attack. And he is acting as the tank. I mean, having this on hand is always good, and she is acting as a pseudo support character with a big sword. <laughs> yeah, let's go with this. Let's get Liberating Exhortation. Let's see what the upgrades are before I decide on that route. It also gives Steadfast, plus 5 Resolve. Alright, not a huge fan of that upgrade. Alright, so I do like the quick upgrade, so let's, let's grab this. So right now we don't have a way to break out of crowd control. <laughs> we just kind of have to wait for the duration to end. So I want to take matters into my own hands yeah, a little more. Right. Oh yeah, I want to break into this. We have any? Mm -hmm. We do. How may I help? I'll see what I can find. Mm -hmm. Yes. Indeed. That's it. A replica of the uh, Tanvi or Toa, the Rautian Book of Virtues. Real quiet now. Of course. All right.
Let's go to the Serpent's Crown, turn in the other bounty, and begin sailing to Dunnage again. But I don't think I mentioned it, but I know I have all those uh, map fragments from Deserol's bounties. I'm not going to put them together until after I speak to Deserol. I want to see if she has different dialogue for both the fragments and the full map. Great eel roars with hunger. Will you help Barati to calm it? He breathes heavily and stares from a, under a furrowed brow. I have dealt with Rafik the red beard. Tangaloa relishes any good meal, but I say justice makes for a savory dish. Nodding, Barati presents you with payment. Not nearly as much as the uh, Royal Deadfire Company. You served up a mighty feast, and the great eel's belly swells for a time. Until it hungers again, Barati's work is done. Barati inclines his head and says no more. To feed the gods is sacred work. Barati gives thanks. All right, let's exit the palace. Uh, we'll position ourselves next to an exit, the Serpent's Crown, and then wrap up the episode. And next time we'll leave Nakataka once again, set sail for Dunnage. We have four bounties to turn in. And a potential map to follow up on. Kitty kitty. Okay, we're gonna call it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.